The term rounding difference is used to describe something insignificant. It's not something that we get overly concerned about. However, when you discover that Excel's rounding methodology and Power Query's rounding methodology are different, maybe you start to realize that this could give you a bigger impact than you first thought. And that's what we're looking at in this video. So let's start by looking at a scenario. Let's suggest that the entrance exam for a specific university requires applicants to sit for exams. If their rounded average score is 65 or more, they are accepted into the university, otherwise they are rejected. Therefore, passing this exam becomes very important. Here we can see the results of four applicants, and these are the average scores. The requirement for the university is that they are a rounded average. So let's round these numbers. So the round, I'll just type equals round, open bracket, select the cell to zero decimal places and then close that bracket. There we go, that has calculated as we would expect. No issues so far. Okay, now let's add this data to Power Query. So I've got a cell selected, I'll go to data from table slash range. I don't need the round column, so I will delete that. With the average column selected, I'll go to add column, rounding, and then select round. I'll have that to zero decimal places and then click OK. OK, Power Query has now rounded those numbers. Let's load them back into Excel. So home, close and load, close and load two. I put that as a table into cell F2 and then click OK. I've just remove the decimal places from here so it's easier to see. This should give you cause for concern because suddenly Sally, who had 64.5 that was rounded up to 65 using Excel, now that same score of 64.5 is rounded down to 64. Bizarrely, Vera's score of 69.5 rounds up in both cases. So using Excel's version of round, Sally is going to university. Using Power Query's version of round, Sally is not going to university. What's going on here? Why are these numbers different? Well, it's because Excel and Power Query by default use different methods of rounding. I'm sure when you were at school, you learned that when we have a 0.5, it always rounds up, always. There's no exceptions, 0.5 rounds up. Now I don't know if this type of rounding has an official name, let's just call it traditional rounding. And this is the approach which Excel uses. So 64.5 rounds up to 65, and 69.5 rounds up to 70. Power Query, on the other hand, uses banker's rounding. I'm sure I can guess your response. Banker's rounding? Who's ever heard of it? Well, using the traditional method, if 0.5 always rounds up, it creates a bias over time. Banker's rounding is a method that seeks to remove that bias. The rules with banker's rounding is that 0.5 rounds to the closest even number. Therefore, 64.5 rounds down to 64 because 64 is the closest even number, but 69.5 rounds up to 70 because 70 is the closest even number. Now, this is not a new concept because banker's rounding has been used as the default method within VBA. However, most people aren't even aware that it is a method. So which is right? Which method should you choose? Well, unfortunately, it's not the case that one's right and one's wrong. They're just different methods of rounding. Now, banker's rounding seeks to remove the bias that we get from always rounding up. So how much of an impact does this really have? Let's have a look. Here in column B, we have 100,000 numbers between one and 100 that have been rounded to one decimal place. The total of all those numbers is 504,000. In column D, we've used traditional rounding. 
and in column E we've used a formula to simulate banker's rounding. Traditional rounding comes at 509,000, whilst banker's rounding comes in at 504,000. We can see in this summary over here that traditional rounding has a variance of about 1%, but banker's rounding has a variance that is close to zero. Now, even if we recalculate these numbers, we get this similar pattern. The traditional rounding with these numbers is out by 1%, whilst banker's rounding is pretty close to zero. Therefore, you might say that banker's rounding is a better option. However, what if we're concerned about odd and even numbers? Using the same source, we have checked how many of these numbers are odd or even. Using traditional rounding, we have 50,044 even numbers out of the 100,000 numbers. For banker's rounding, we have 54,924. If we look at the summary of this, we can say that using traditional rounding, the bias towards even numbers is exceptionally small. Whilst using this scenario, the bias towards even numbers is almost 10%. Therefore, the bias that is removed by using banker's rounding in one area creates a bias in another area, which means there really isn't a best approach. It's down to the context of the scenario that you are calculating in. Now, the truth is the biggest impact is not really on big sample sizes. The biggest impact is on individual numbers, or as we saw in our scenario at the start, on individuals themselves. If we used Excel's method of calculation, Sally goes to university. If we use Power Query's method of calculation, Sally does not. These are potentially life-changing decisions that are made by somebody else selecting either Excel or Power Query as their method of calculation. Now the truth is what we've seen so far is all the default behavior. So the default behavior of Excel and the default behavior of Power Query. Both of them are capable of calculating both forms of rounding. So let's have a look at that now. So if we want Excel to calculate banker's rounding, we could use an alternative formula, which I'll enter here, equals if, open bracket. So if the mod of C3, so one decimal place, equals 0 0.5, in that scenario, we want to use the M round function. An M round is used to return a number rounded to a specific multiple. So if we select cell C3 and the multiple that we want to use is two, so that it's always an even number. So here, if a number has 0 0.5, it's always rounded to an even number. Otherwise, we just perform the normal round calculation to zero decimal places. Close the if, press return, and there we go. We now get exactly the same numbers between bankers rounding in Excel and bankers rounding in Power Query. Okay, now let's see how we can get traditional rounding inside Power Query. I've got my normal round calculation here. So I'll add another column. So add rounding and then round to zero decimal places, okay. Here we have an additional parameter that we can use inside the number.round function in Power Query. So I'll enter a comma, and you can see that this parameter is called rounding mode. I'll start typing rounding mode, and you can see the options that have now popped up. I want the option to round away from zero, so I'll select that, click away, and that has now calculated that rounding. So I'll call this one banker's rounding, and then this one we called traditional rounding. Okay, let's close and load that back into Excel. Perfect, so we now have traditional and banker's rounding for Excel, and banker's rounding and traditional rounding for Power Query. And those numbers are all comparable across those different forms of rounding. So in summary, the default rounding options for Excel and Power Query are different. Excel uses traditional rounding, while Power Query uses banker's rounding. But we've seen that both options create some form of bias.
Therefore, which method you choose is entirely dependent on your circumstances. Over a large sample set, the difference might be reasonably insignificant. However, the biggest impact is not on large sample sets, but on individuals and the impact that it could have on someone like Sally that we saw in our example. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.